a joyous Christmas Eve to one and all. We invite you to stand as you're able and please worship with us today.
welcome you to worship tonight at Grace United Methodist Church, and we wish you a Merry Christmas. We're excited to have you here, and we welcome those who are worshiping online with us as well. And we want to introduce ourselves, so I'm one of the pastors here, and my name is Jessica. My name is Drew. I get to be one of the pastors here, too. Welcome, one and all, especially if it's your first time worshiping with Grace. We're glad that you were led here and hope that tonight is a blessing. Indeed, and we would like to connect with you, so we want to invite you to fill out a connect card, and you'll find those in the pews right in front of you. There's a white card that you can fill out um, by hand with the pencil there, or you can find one of our orders of worship and scan the QR code on the top right to fill out your connect card on your smartphones. Uh, but this is a way for us to celebrate that you're here, to know who's here so we can pray for you by name and for you to share any uh, prayer concerns that you have with us as well. So thanks for taking a moment to do that. Those paper connect cards can go in the offering plate when they comes around later in worship. Uh, typically we offer announcements at the end of worship, but tonight we're ending with Silent Night. So let us let you know about a couple things that are coming up in the life of the church, uh, starting with. Yes, tomorrow morning we are going to be having worship, and there will be one worship service at 11 a.m. And so we wanted to let you know that uh, you are invited to come back tomorrow morning at 11. That service will also be live streamed. And then the following Sunday, we will also be having one service at 11 a.m. But tomorrow is uh, especially exciting because we're inviting folks to wear their Christmas PJs. Yes, don't worry. I will not be in mine, but we invite you to wear yours. Absolutely. And then we invite you to celebrate all 12 days of Christmas, ending with the Feast of Epiphany. After the 12 days of Christmas, there's another holiday, the Epiphany, where we celebrate the coming of the three kings. And so we're going to throw an Epiphany party. We're going to serve king cake and cocoa, and we're going to make a big bonfire. There's this European tradition of burning our evergreens when we take them down to show the world that the light of Christ has come. So we're going to have king cake, cocoa, and a bonfire on Friday, January 6th, and we invite you all to be a part of that. And then further into January, we'll be starting a new sermon series called the Jesus's Family Tree, and uh, we'll have worship at 9 and 11 with our engagement hour at 10 o'clock. Um, there's plenty of good classes and other ways to engage during that 10 o'clock hour, um, and we're going to be having a pastor class starting on the 8th, Baptism 101, about the theology and practice of the sacrament of baptism in the United Methodist Church. So we invite you to be a part of the ministry of the church and engage with grace in all of those ways. Again, welcome. Our worship continues now with the lighting of the Advent candles and the Christ candle. Will the sweet hymns come forward at this time? As they come forward, we'll sing, What Child Is This? <laughs> to be born this day of the Virgin Mary. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him love, the babe, the Son of Mary. To the stand as you are able for the reading of scripture. Thank you. A 
reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Listen for the word of the Lord. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds, shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Welcome once again. I invite you to join me in thanking our Thrive Music team and all the volunteers that help make worship possible. Thank you very much. It's always fun to try to come up with a sermon based on a scripture that everybody may know by heart. There may be somebody here who's never heard of it, but likelihood is high that, that some of you have. And so, uh, because I'm a dork, and because you've also likely heard a little bit of Dr. Seuss sometime in the last 25 days or so, I decided this time to try and make a sermon that rhymes. So, let us pray. Come Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds so that we can receive your word. Your word written in the scriptures. Your word proclaimed in the church. Your word made flesh this night in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, good evening, friends, and welcome, one and all. Come, let us hearken, head and heart, within this hallowed hall. Come, friendly beasts, come last, come least, come sinners, saints, alive, deceased. See, for us, our God has set a feast inside a cattle stall. It is, quite, it's, it is a quite peculiar place for meeting, what with its cows a-lowing, sheeps a-bleating. And yet, this is where God has set our scene, a creature's creche, unkempt, uncouth, unclean. Good people all, again this Christmas Eve, let us consider this and see what we believe. It's fair to ask who comes this night. It's fair to be uncertain is this the one we need or just some man behind a curtain? Is this the one, God's only son? What child is this? Why has he come? What does it mean to say that God is born and from a virgin? 
In short, it means the prophets got it right. It's who they said would come who comes this night. To really understand this new arrival, the wisest ones will point us to our Bibles. That story, like each advent, starts in darkness. That's where God wonders, how am I going to start this? It happens with a word. Let there be light. That word, that light, that God has come tonight. In this beginning, God creates an Adam and an Eve, but then a serpent slithers and God's children he deceives. When God comes back to find them, well, the truth is out. They're naked. The Lord had promised everything. Instead, they chose to take it. The story then continues on, but chapter after chapter, like us, the people always grasp at their own happily ever after. From catastrophe to covenant, captivity to freedom, the prophets say, the Lord has come, but you're too blind to see him. The prophets preach the problem to an exiled Israel. When things get bad enough, they cry, O come, Emmanuel. The prophets heard the people's cry, and God could hear it too. God sent the prophets back there to announce, here's what God chose to do. They said, the time has come for God's Messiah to descend as servant, savior, son. The ox and ass, they'll know his voice. The wolf and lamb lie down. He shall your swords and pistols prune and water desert ground. He may not be the king you want, but you need the news he brings. He'll have forgiveness on his lips and healing in his wings. This is the shocking thing we say occurs this night. The world is saved inside a cave by silent candlelight. Verbum caro factum est, the word of God is now made flesh, a mystery made manifest in meekness, not in might. It's almost too much to take in. The Father's Spirit's Son is born a babe from Mary's womb. The Godhead has a mom. Oh, can it be? Divinity is found in such proximity, in flesh that breathes and poops and pees. Oh, what a work our God has done. But why? Again, it's fair to ask, has heaven to earth come down? Why would our God come pitch a tent upon such thorny ground? In baby's breath, he comes to bless. Our form, our mess, our sin, our flesh, to take on and redeem our death, far as the curse is found. We celebrate not just his birth, but what he came to do, to reconcile us with God, divisions to undo. He joins the Gentiles and the Jews, joins R's with D's and LGBTQs. His outstretched arms unite us all, including me's and you's. That's why he's here, why him we praise with lute and drum and fife. Within his body, Christ has borne our suffering, our strife. He came to live and also die, because so will you and so will I. He came to make of death's dark tomb a womb to risen life. And so, what shall we give him as the Christmas carol asks, what have we in our power to give? Tis far too big a task. I guess if we were shepherds, we'd have to bring a sheep. No, there's no way that's enough. This grace can't be that cheap. It's not. It came at quite a price. But children, don't you see? All of this 
is God's own gift offered to us for free. So if you wish to give him something on this Christmas Eve, give him what he wants, what he came here to receive. Give him your sin and your shame and your doubt. Give him the things that you can't talk about. Give him your rage and your age and your cancer. Give him your questions that don't have an answer. Give him your best, but then give him your worst. For inside his kingdom, the last become first. The reason he's here, why we've gathered this day, is to witness as Christ bears our burdens away. Can you hear what the prophets and angels still say? Do not be afraid. This God makes a way. A way through the muck, a way through the mire, a way through the desert, the flood, and the fire. A way to come rescue you lost and you lame. A way for the gospel, excuse me, a way to restore us by the power of his name. A way for the gospel to be once more unfurled, the gospel of grace, of joy to the world. And so, one more time, before our Christmas snooze, lend me your ears and hear the good news. For all of you, fallen, afraid, and forlorn, for you, Christ has come. For you, he is born. Receive him, my friends. Here, laid in the stable. For you, he has journeyed from manger to table. He waits for you here, his grace to impart, to save you and bless you and transform your heart. In the name of the Christ child, whose love has no end, God bless you. Merry Christmas. Amen and amen. Well, you might be a dork, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, this next part will not be in rhyme, but I do want to let you know that our offering this year for Christmas Eve is going to be going to Hurricane Relief. Um, and we are excited that this will take part in a, a big way as part of a multi-generational mission trip that will go from uh, folks from Grace to parts of Florida who have been um, dealing with the destruction from the hurricane. And so during uh, spring break, which happens to be Holy Week uh, this coming spring, we will take a team down there. And if you're interested in learning more about that, um, there are flyers that look like this that are on the welcome table. Please grab one or you can check out our website under the serve section. Um, but 100% of the uh, offering tonight that is marked Christmas Eve will be going towards these efforts. And so thank you for your generosity and the ways that you love others through that. Ushers, you can come forward at this time.
In use with the sacrament of Holy Communion, I invite you to stand as you're able for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. And at his birth, the angels sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Holy Lord, Lord, God God of power power and and might, might. heaven Heaven and and earth are are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna Hosanna in the the highest. Blessed is he he who comes comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. You sent a star to guide the Gentiles to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, Again, he gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is is risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence that we are children of God, Together, let us pray. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the word of God made flesh, offered to you as the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ offered to you as the cup of salvation. Would those who are prepared to help serve come forward at this time? All others, you may be seated. Here at Grace, we celebrate an open table, which means that you don't have to be a member of this or any church to come and receive. All are invited. The only thing you have to do is want it, to want to receive what is offered here, and that is the grace of God in Jesus Christ. When you come forward, you'll be offered a piece of bread, which you can then dip in the cup to receive both together. If you prefer, you can just take the bread alone, or you can use an individual serving of the cup that's here in the communion rail. If you need gluten-free elements, those are available at the center aisle. And as always, you're welcome to remain seated in prayer if you'd rather not receive. All of this, though, is made ready with you in mind. Christ has made the journey from manger to table and is offered to you here. You're all welcome. stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Time has come for the light to be shared and shed abroad. I invite you to grab your candle. We will light our candles and bring the light to you. When we do, we will hold the light still and you can light off of our candle. Once your candle is lighted, hold it high. When you're lighting your candle, turn it sideways and then hold it high, all right? Now hear these words from scripture. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Even those that dwell in the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. It is the same God who said, let there be light, who has shown that light upon us in the face of Jesus Christ. This light shines in the darkness. And the darkness shall not overcome it. Amen.
take down the lights, we'll get the full effect. If the booth will turn down the lights, we'll get the full effect. If the booth will turn down the lights, there it is. Now we invite you to turn and see your reflection and see how the light is multiplied. This is where the light has come. There is where the light is going. Take this light to all the world. Reflect this light in all that you do so that all may know the good news that Christ the Savior is born and remains with us always. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.